Well, good morning. Uh, <clears throat> glad you're joining, and I want to share just a few verses. Uh, Hebrews chapter out of Hebrews chapter eleven. We've been walking through the Hall of Faith, uh, heroes of faith, these men and women who, uh, in the midst of different situations, remained faithful, steadfast with the Lord. I want to mention a couple of things. One is this Friday night we have our School of the Spirit. We have our encounter night and encourage people to come out 6.30 p.m. We're going to be worshiping and exalting the Lord together. And it's going to be the same night that there's scheduled uh, a person uh, in our community who comes in and is a medium. And uh, we're just going to lift up the name of Jesus and exalt the Lord and build and establish a throne for Jesus in our community uh, on this same evening and just believe God to just silence any plans of the enemy that would try to infiltrate our county and our community. Sunday morning, I woke up and God said, it's a time for warfare. And one of the ways that we war, and we heard it again Sunday morning, uh, I've heard it multiple times over the last few weeks, is praise. And so Friday night, we're having an encounter night and we're going to lift up the name of Jesus and worship and praise. And just really, the Bible says in Psalms 8 that praise silences the enemy. One way that we bring God glory is by praise and worship. Right now, we're talking about the way that we bring God glory. It's living by faith. But our next series will be that we bring God glory through praise and worship. Praise is a powerful, powerful weapon in the spirit. And it silences our enemy. Psalms 149 says it places them in fetters and chains. And so join us Friday night, 6.30 p.m. here at the Potter's House as we just praise God and uh, just exalt the Lord and establish a throne. It says in Psalms 22, 3, God inhabits the praises of his people. That word inhabit means he enthrones upon. So whatever we praise, we build a throne for. And so this Friday night, uh, 6.30 p.m. here at the Potter's House, we're going to build a throne for Jesus, the King of the world, the King of the whole earth. And we're going to ask the King of glory to come in, break in, to our community and us to see revival and awakening in the central Michigan area. Praise God. So join us Friday night, 6.30 p.m. Uh, it's gonna be, gonna be a great time. We're walking through Hebrews chapter 11 and I wanna talk about Noah Sunday morning. We, we spoke about Noah. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse three of Hebrews 11 tells us that uh, we, we understand that the world, by faith, we understand the worlds were framed by things that were invisible. Words are invisible, but words with faith have power. They have created power. And God spoke and things were. And he speaks to us because he wants to bring something forth that's visible. He speaks to us words. He drops things into us. He gives us direction and we believe it and respond to that, and it brings things forth into the earth realm that God wants there. I want to read a quote. It's uh, by Dr. Tony Evans. He, he says this, Faith is acting like it is so, even when it's not so, in order that it might be so, simply because God said so. <laughs> Powerful. This is Dr. Tony Evans, a quote that, that I that I read that he shared. He says this, let me share it again. Faith is acting like it is so, even when it is not so, in order that it might be so, simply because God said so. Faith is believing what God says. Faith is believing what God says. We talked Sunday morning, faith is not a feeling. Faith is not an emotion. Faith is action. Faith is moving. Faith without works is dead. Works literally bring faith to its completion, to its cons consummation is one of the words there where it talks about that it's perfect. It's in uh, James chapter uh, 2, maybe verse 26. So faith is displayed by our actions, by our actions. And now I want to just take a few moments and look at Noah. In Hebrews eleven seven. it says this about Noah. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, 
prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. So by faith, Noah received a word from God. He believed that word and he was moved. I want you to understand, faith moves. I shared Sunday morning, our feet do our faith talking. Yes, our confession is crucial, what we speak, but if all the are is words and there's no action, then it's, it's not a living faith. It's not a living faith. By faith, no, move with godly fear. It says he was warned of things not yet seen. Do you understand? It had, some would say it hadn't even rained yet. Other, there's debate about that. So I, I won't say that. Most, some would say that the, the only water that came forth was what sprang up from, from the earth. There had been no rain yet. But there had never been an ark built. God is, by faith, Noah, divinely warned of things not yet seen. There had never been a flood. There had not been an ark. Noah is building an ark, a football field and a half long, four stories high, a hundred miles from the closest sea or body of water. How many know Noah wasn't going to build this ark and then carry it over and drop it into that sea? It wasn't, it wasn't going to happen. We know that. So it's stuff that he hadn't seen yet, but because he received the word from God, he obeyed. He moved in action. And it started the first time Noah cut down a tree. What was he doing? He was by faith. He was moving by faith. It was faith that was prompting his movement. You know how many years he built this ark? 120 years. 120 years. After year one, there had been no rain. Year 10, no rain. Year 50, no rain. Year 100, there's no rain. There's no indication yet that there's going to be this flood that has never happened on the earth before. After 120 years, and he's in a culture that tells us in Genesis chapter 6, it says he's in a culture where everybody's heart and intent of their heart is evil. He's in this demonized culture that is, you know, ridiculing him, saying, what in the world is this guy doing? And yet he remained faithful in the midst of that culture, in the midst of that culture. I put down here, believed what had never been seen and was invisible, and was invisible. You've probably heard of hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is external pressure. If, you, if a person goes down to a certain level, below sea level, in the water, the pressure becomes so that their body won't function. They get locked jaw. Different, if you take boats down and they sink at a certain level, the pressure, external pressure becomes so strong that the, that the, the sidewalls cave in. But a submarine can go so deep. Why? Because it's pressured on the inside. It has pressure on the inside, pressing against the in, external pressure, pushing against it. That's what we need to do. Noah was in a culture that was pressuring him to compromise. How many know we're in a culture that wants us to compromise the truth of God's word? wants us to compromise things that we know are right because God has declared them as right. Even things God has called us to do, there's pressure not to do that. And we need to build ourselves up inside where the internal pressure of the Spirit of God, the life of God, the, the, the faith of God in us counteracts that external pressure. And that's what Noah did. He built himself. He had to strengthen himself. Remember when David was... Uh, he, he the, the the friends that he came back when it was came back after Ziglag had raided and taken his family and taken their possessions and everything and the people there were saying they were angry at David and they were gonna they wanted to, I think even harm David. What does David do? David encouraged himself in the Lord. David went and he edified him. He built himself up so that the internal pressure of the life of God, the word of God, what God desired was stronger than that external pressure that wanted him to compromise and respond out of emotion. Man, can I encourage you? What God has spoken to you, one way you activate it is you begin to move upon it. You begin to respond to what God has said. And, 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 and move with God and build yourself up. Jude 20 says, praying in the Holy Spirit, build yourself up in the, in, in your most holy faith. Another way we build ourselves up and we keep that inner strength is Hebrews chapter 10. Don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. We need to get together with other believers and edify. 
Build one another up. Strengthen one another. So that this internal, the, the life of God, the life of the Spirit, the pressure of the Holy Spirit in us is stronger than all the external pressure. Noah built an ark in a godless culture. He, has, he, he built an ark he, by faith. He moved. He moved. He obeyed God in a culture that was totally against what he was doing. And the Bible says he was a preacher of righteousness in the midst of that culture. The Bible says it began to rain. And Noah not only saved himself by building the ark, but his whole family. He built an ark for the saving of his household. He responded to what God said. One man's obedience. And a brother come up Sunday. His whole family followed him. As a family, they obeyed God. They built this ark. And guess what? We're here today because somebody believed God. By faith, Noah moved with godly fear and built an ark, prepared an ark for the saving of his household. Hallelujah. We're here today because of Noah's obedience thousands of years ago. All of mankind would have been wiped out at that point. But Noah heard God was faithful to God and did what God told him to do. Hallelujah. And he gave God glory. He brought God glory. Let's be people that give God glory by living by faith, by living by faith. Let me share three, th three questions I gave at the end of this message on Sunday. The first question is this, to ask ourselves, am I living by faith or am I visiting it at times? Faith is a lifestyle, not a visitation plan. It's a lifestyle. Live by faith. I'm not like this. I'm not. This is my second question. Is my life one of consistency or is it more like a roller coaster up and down? And if so, why? Why am I like this? God wants faith as a lifestyle, a consistent trust in the Lord. The third one, third question. What challenges Am I facing right now? How will I live by faith in the midst of them? How will you, how will I, in the midst of the challenges that I'm facing right now, live by faith? What words, what scriptures has God spoken to me regarding these challenges? And how will I apply them? What's God speaking to me in the midst of my life right now? the challenges that I'm facing, and how do I apply them so that I can live by faith and bring glory to God and bring glory to God. Hey, I hope you're encouraged. Think on the, the life of Noah. Take some time. Read back Genesis 6 through 9. Just, just powerful account of a man who trusted God, believed God in the midst of all kinds of externals saying something different. He believed what God said. Have a great day.